Alright guys, welcome back. We have another question from chapter 2 of Beer and Johnson textbook. And we have member BC that exerts on member AC a force P directed along line BC. We know that the P must have the horizontal force of 325 Newton and in the A part of the question, we need to find the magnitude of the force P and in the B part, we need to find the vertical component. Uh, so from the question, we know that the, the force P is directed along the line BC, but there's a concept that we're gonna get familiar in the next chapters, and that's the concept of two force member. And when we have a member that are only forces on two ends, the force that we're gonna have in the member will be along the line that connects these two points. So if we're gonna draw this in here, and if we show both component, let's call, so this will be our P, which will be the resultant of the X component. Let's call this one PX and this one EY, and let's consider this our X, and this will be our Y axis. So if that's the case, we can use the dimensions that we have in the question. We know here we have 720 millimeter, and the horizontal component, which is what we have in here, will be 650 millimeter. So it's pretty easy now because we we can consider this right triangle that I'm highlighting in yellow and with just a simple concept of sine or cosine if we call this angle here alpha we can find all the information so uh, before that let's just find the the hypotenuse if of this right triangle and we know that the hypotenuse which is BC squared will be 72 squared plus 6 fixed uh, 650 squared and our BC will be the square root of 72 squared plus 650 squared and this would give us 970 millimeter and we can do simple uh, sine and cosine to figure out the force P and we already know that our the horizontal component which is PX is 325 Newton and it's easy enough to find the P from here and we can find P by after. And the other thing is that we know that we have a pain at point B and whenever we have pain, we know that we have both X and Y component, which is the two components that we have in here. We're gonna go over the, or if you get a chance to look at the questions in the next chapter, you'll see the different reactions at different supports that we have. And pin is one of those supports that we have both X and Y components and there is no moment at that support since it's a pin we don't consider any friction and it can freely rotate so that's why we don't consider any moment but when we have a fixed support uh, we need to consider a moment as well but that's something for like our next chapters i just want to brought it up in case because you're probably not going in this question uh, necessarily chronologically so that's why i brought it up just to go over it as a quick review so now we're good to go we have a uh, cosine of alpha which we know will be adjacent 650 divided by hypotenuse which is 970 if we want to go with the dimensions and if we want to go with the magnitude of the force we have 325 divided by the force which is p so that way we can find our p our p will be simply 970 times 325 divided by 650 and this would give us 485 newton which is uh, what the question is asking in the a part so basically the ratio of the dimensions so will be the same ratio of the forces that we have in here, which are PX, PY, and P. And we can do the same thing for PY. So for PY, we obviously need the opposite uh, to this to the angle alpha, which is PY. Our hypotenuse is P, which we already found 485 from the previous. And we can we we have the dimension. So we know this ratio will be equal to the ratio of the dimensions and distances that we have in the uh, question for our right triangle that I highlighted in yellow. And if that's the case, we will have the opposite, which is 720 divided by hypotenuse, which we found in the beginning, which was 970. And if that's the case, our PY will be 485 times 720 divided by 970. And this would give us 360 Newton. And that would be the B part of the question. Uh, 
One more thing about the unit conversion, we have millimeter and newton. Since we are using the ratio of these two, the unit will be canceled out anyway. So that's why I didn't convert the millimeter in here. But we can do the conversion. It's not going to change anything. Um, we don't need to do the unit conversion necessarily. So that would be all for this one. Uh, let me know if you have a better solution to solve this question. And uh, feel free to put any question that you have uh, for this one. You guys take care and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.